Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Uh, please subscribe to this podcast so you can be updated when new ones are released. Uh, if you'd like to leave a review, um, please go to my website. You can actually leave a video review if you're if you'd like to, and also if you'd like to support uh, the running costs of this free service, please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland, and the link's on my website as well. And just as I started recording this, Andre, my little boy, the ferret, runs out of his bag and he gets into a carrier bag. And he's got this new thing where he goes from one carrier bag to another. And he's got four carrier bags spread around the room, different corners. He does it on purpose. He does, he waits, he waits till I start recording and then he comes out. Anyway. That's just a belief, and it's probably wrong. So I, I wanted to talk about beliefs in this recording, and what beliefs do we have, do you have, do I have, that are getting in the way of, whether it be recovery, or a belief that's getting in the way of you feeling more relaxed. So I'm just going to discuss it, uh, juggle her through, you know, a few ideas around, and that's it really. That's what I'm going to do in this recording. So, ask the question. So you got your mind working now, thinking, oh, I wonder what beliefs get in the way. And I think the thing with beliefs is they can be uh, a little bit, we can be blindsided by them. You know, they're in a, we can have blind spots where the beliefs are. And the thing about blind spots is we can't see them, so uh, there's... There's no way I'm ever going to blame myself for having a blind spot because it's a blind spot for a reason. You can't see it. However, sometimes having a mirror, you know, looking at things from a different point of view, or from a different angle, you get to see some of those blind spots. And thinking in a different way allows you to see those blind spots. So what's getting in the way of you relaxing? What do you believe about yourself that in some ways may there may be lots of evidence that it's true. There may be lots of evidence that it used to be true, but maybe it's not anymore, but you've not reevaluated it lately. You not had a little clear out, you know? There's been no updates. Because so I remember years ago, um, years and years and years ago, I helped out someone. And they were in a really, really, they were a terrible place, like the worst place, sort of mentally, emotionally. And about three years after the event, I sent them a message on Facebook and I didn't I didn't mean it to come across as I don't know I, I said something that didn't I don't know how to word this but I was talking to her like she was still the same person as she was three years ago basically that was it and she said 
I've moved on from that. I don't have those issues anymore. The thing is, I hadn't seen her for three years. I didn't really know, other than kind of her Facebook pages and posts, I didn't know anything about her life really. So I had to update my uh, my belief about her. So instead of being uh, someone that was vulnerable, that she was at a certain point, and we all have been, to who she is now, a very independent person that has moved on with her life and doesn't you don't no longer have those issues um, or they're no longer you know there's no longer a spotlight on them it's a good thing with a spotlight is you can move it you can move it just like you know if you get a telescope and you point it at the moon which is a random sentence which I bet you didn't think I was going to say but I used to have a telescope when I was about 13, 12, something like that. And I used to point it at the moon. And you, it was a fairly good telescope. I could see the craters and stuff, you know. But what surprised me, what surprised me was how quickly the moon moved around the earth. Because in the time it took me to put my pajamas on, and admittedly, I don't really, I rarely move too quickly. Apart from when Doctor Who was on, and I'd move really quickly because I wanted to watch it. Or Wonder Woman. And the moon, the moon moves. It's changing. Things are always changing. Even something as big as the moon that seems as if we know it moves. You know it moves and we move around the sun or whatever, you know, we know that the moon's going to move. But we're not aware of how quickly it actually moves. I know it's spinning around, just like all of the planets are spinning around. So although I had the spotlight on this thing, huge thing in the sky, bright, it changed always changing I mean anyone that thinks oh, some people have that with pride don't they I'm never going to change no man's going to make me change no woman's going to make me change I'm going to stay the same forever like it's some kind of like it's an option you don't have that option you have to change someone that says never going to change I say, okay, in that case, there's a banana. It's on the table. Come back in nine weeks' time and eat that banana. They're not going to want to. Because it's going to be disgusting. You won't be able to eat it in nine weeks' time. Everything's changing all the time. So why would we expect everything else outside of us to change and not us not to change? It doesn't, doesn't, even logically, scientifically, it doesn't make sense, does it? You don't have to be a scientist. It's like everything's changing. That's why we have to redecorate the walls in our house. That's why we have to change the carpet every few years, maybe, or change the mattress on the bed. Every few weeks, <laughs> not every, however often, things change, or things wear out. But you know what else wears out? Beliefs. Thoughts. Limiting beliefs can wear out. Because somewhere, you know it's not true. If something is incongruent and inconsistent with what you really know to be true, if you believe in it, it's it's not going to be stable. It's not going to be a stable belief. So, for example, if you believe that uh, 
you know, I, I can't get to sleep. For example, I could say, I can't, I never sleep. I can never get to sleep. I never sleep at night. Got insomnia. I haven't slept for 10 years. First of all, that's a lie. It's, it's, you know, it's, you'd, you'd be dead, probably. You know, or you'd be completely, you'd be in a psychiatric unit. Like, on heavy drugs, which would make you go to sleep. Because we can't stay awake for huge amounts of time. The body and the mind, it just doesn't work. It can't allow it. It just won't happen. Trouble getting to sleep, fair enough. But even people that have trouble getting to sleep do fall asleep. Even if it is only for short periods of time. It's like I've got a, a ferret. He sleeps for a good 20, 21 hours a day. Now, right now, you might think, well, if he sleeps, how come he's not asleep now? How come he's running around and making noise? It's because I'm doing this recording. He seems to, whenever I make a recording, he, he seems to pop up and want to run around and be part of the recording. I don't know why. I'm standing up, so I think he wants my attention. He thinks I'm going to chase him or something, which I'm not, because that's not why I'm standing up, Andre. So that belief that we don't sleep, like I say, oh, I don't sleep ever. No. I had a sleep test for sleep apnea, which I have, and the sleep test. I, I said to the person, I do apologise for any background sounds, but I didn't know he was going to be doing this. It's not usually quite this bad. I'll take you into another room. <laughs> they will follow me. So, this sleep test I had, I went to the place in the, in the morning, took it in because I had to take it in first thing in the morning and I said, I didn't sleep at all she said I was just sleep, didn't sleep at all didn't get a wink it turned out I got six hours sleep so the thing is, we're, we can only be aware of when we're awake, we can't be aware of when we're asleep I mean there are times you could be dreaming, kind of be alert but generally, we don't know when we're asleep. That's why it's called sleeping. He's followed me into the hallway. So with the police system of... I can't sleep, I never get to sleep, I can't sleep at all ever. It's not true. That's an example of something that you kind of know and you, you, don't, you know on a level that it's not true, but you might stick to it because you just got used to saying it. Maybe it gets a little bit of attention. Maybe it gives you an opportunity to feel sorry for yourself. And I'm not condemning that because I love feeling sorry for myself. Sometimes I absolutely love it. But it's not always necessarily useful. It's probably rarely useful, but sometimes from an emotional outlet, perhaps it can be a little bit useful just to get in touch with what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling, you know? But the belief, what belief do you have? that you feel is getting in the way of feeling more relaxed? What belief do you have that's perhaps getting in the way of recovery, whatever that is? So, you know, recovery could be no longer having those uh, anxiety attacks no longer, or maybe re, re, renaming it, be 
because ultimately panic attack and anxiety attack attack is a horrible term isn't it because we're basically saying that we're attacking ourselves we're at war with ourselves and we're not your unconscious mind loves you your unconscious mind wants the best for you and it's waiting for you to tell your unconscious mind what you want so it listens to your conscious mind it listens all the time to what you're thinking to the things you're saying out loud to the things you're thinking about to the things you're watching on television even listening on the radio music you're listening to it's list it's always taking all that in thinking that that's what you want more of So, for example, watching violent films, constantly watching lots and lots, might not be the best thing uh, for a peaceful mind. Thinking to yourself that you're no good at something, or that you're useless, or you don't deserve this, and keep thinking like that. You know, if, if someone was to think like that, over and over and over again the unconscious mind absorbs it and takes it as a command because the way hypnosis works is the hypnotist gets you all relaxed you know and you kind of you go into like a trancey kind of state of mind where you're very suggestible very susceptible to what the the hypnotist is saying to you and the traditional style of hypnosis would be you're now going to feel relaxed and when you uh, you know you feel relaxed in your feet you feel relaxed in your hands and you know when you go to work on the way to work you'll notice that you'll feel relaxed just sitting on a train seeing that seat and you're sitting down in a train and the feeling of sitting on that seat actually relaxes your body and your mind as you visualize getting to work and then sitting down in your chair at work or maybe taking your coat off having a cup of coffee and that sense of comfort that you feel connected with that so there's a lot of positive suggestions over and over in a hypnotic uh, induction or hypnotic session so that your unconscious mind hears it your conscious mind is always all also hearing it but it's boring to the conscious mind it's monotonous repetition is monotony feeling relaxed in your little finger on your left hand feeling relaxed in your little finger on your right hand noticing the feeling in your left eyebrow Maybe you can raise the eyebrow and notice the relaxed feeling that you experience. And going on and on and on, that is boring. And then moving into, you're going to feel this way at this time. You're going to have more of those experiences. And talking directly to your unconscious mind and saying, please, we have more relaxation more of a sense of purpose and a sense of feeling calm and realising that you're a great person and you deserve to be happy you deserve to be relaxed and getting in touch with that feeling and asking your unconscious mind now to give you more of those feelings of comfort not just in all the parts of your body but also in your mind giving you that feeling that you have that you would experience in your safe space wherever that might be might be in your bedroom 
it could be sitting on a beach it could be in the garden it could be it could be on holiday it could be in your greenhouse your shed it could be in your mind that safe space where everything is calm we all have that in us we all have that space whether it's external or internal a safe space and to be able to experience that more and more naturally without without wanting it or needing it but just experiencing it and appreciating it and the more you experience it the more you expect to experience it so the more calmness and relaxation you experience the more likely you're going to experience those feelings of calmness and relaxation in your mind and your body because you're starting to expect it. It's the natural order of things. We expect what's already come before. And the more we expect something, the more likely it will come. Because you're sending that message to your unconscious mind that's what I want I like that I'd like more of that please it's almost like going to a takeaway you know drive through and just ordering what you want you order it you might not get it straight away you know you might pay your money and you drive through to the next window there might be a few minutes to wait eventually your order comes through sometimes I might say well, would you like to you know we're busy do you want to go and park up and we'll bring it over to you so you park up maybe you wait five six seven minutes and then someone comes over and brings your takeaway over to you to your car it's kind of like that you ask for what you want but you're not asking another person so there's no way you're ever going to get turned down. No rejection is possible in this scenario. You're asking yourself, you're asking your unconscious mind what you want, what you need, what you require, what you would like more of. You can do it directly or you can do it indirectly. And an indirect way is by thinking more about what you would like thinking more about how you would like to feel more relaxed focusing on those feelings of comfort that you experience expecting to experience more of those feelings of looseness and calmness in your body and in your mind when you expect it it's more likely to happen and of course unconsciously you can just ask yourself directly you can just say please I'd like to have more comfort I'd like to feel more relaxed sit down in a chair lay down on your bed and just say I'd like my body now to feel more relaxed and my mind to slow down doesn't mean it's going to happen instantly but if that's all you focus on you ask your unconscious mind please relax my body and you have 100% belief that your body will relax that's what's going to happen what else could happen because if that's all you're focusing on and you're not trying to force it because you can't force it it's impossible you can't, you can't force going to sleep you can't force relaxation you can't force yourself to be in love with someone you can't force yourself to like a Marmite sandwich if you don't like Marmite you know you can't there are ways to manipulate your taste buds and stuff but 
generally these things cannot be forced because it's the opposite to what you need relaxation requires relaxation it requires openness to have and to receive that sense of calmness spreading throughout your body and that belief changes other beliefs because you start to think right so I, I used to believe that perhaps I was a stressy person that's what I used to believe I mean going around my life telling people oh I'm a stressy person uptight then there all that stuff and now you realise that it's not true maybe you've always known that it's not true it's just been a you've been busy and it's been one of the little blind spots that we all have but now you see it once you see it you can't ignore it once you see it you can't ignore it I mean you may ba you may bathe your child in the bath and you might think well I might as well use the water as well no just standard to kind of save the environment yes use the water it's my, it's my little child you know it came from my body so you know it's fine but while you're washing the baby or the, the little child you see a little poo flow up to the surface and you see your, your child smiling so you get your get your child out you know and you know get him dressed or her put them to bed and it's time for your bath what are you going to do you can get a little a little fishing net or something and a little cup and get the little bit of poo out and put it down the toilet and flush it away and then just get into the bath the thing is you're not going to be able to forget you're not going to be able to forget that that poo was in that water and you know you're going to have to empty the, the tub and put some more water in or you know wash the bath out and maybe have a shower and that's what it's like when once you see a blind spot it can't unsee it you can't unsee it once it's there once you see it it's available to you so you can allow it to still be there or you can remove it remove that blind spot and that would be the big bit of poo or the little bit of poo floating around happily in the bathtub looking at you saying hey why don't you come and have a bath with me and you're going to think I like you as a friend but no and you're going to get rid of it so once you know that actually you've got that that old belief system that you're you know you was a stressy person or that you weren't able to relax or you know it's all these other things that are, are limiting and we're focusing on stuff to related to relaxation in this recording so there's loads of other stuff that we've all got that we can all work on you know it's a life it's a life's work isn't it let's face it none of us are perfect and none of us will ever be perfect and I'm happy about that because I never want to be perfect so and what would I do what, what would you do with yourself imagine being perfect what would you do with yourself all day so um, what other belief systems are like that bit of poo floating in the water 
in the tub that's of no use to you. There's no use. That, that poo's of no use. I mean, poo, you know what I mean? That's, that's, and the bath water is of no use to you. So, you have to empty the bath water, get rid of the poo, and give that bath a bit of a clean, I'd say, and just wait until your memory <laughs> fades a little bit <laughs> about that, that experience, possibly. But then you've got a clean bath and you've got clean water. Because the difference between you just empty, you know, getting rid of the poo, but getting into that water where the poo was, and you lying in a nice, fresh, clean water. Your state of uh, mind and relaxation, I would imagine, would be very different. And that would be clinging on to something that's not true. You could be in there thinking it's clean water, it's clean water, it's but all the time your mind's going to be thinking of that little little poo floating around. So it's incongruent. And that's where the unconscious mind gets stuck because we're giving it different messages. I want this, but I want that. I want it, but I don't want it. I want to be relaxed. But at the same time, all I'm thinking about is uh, times when I haven't been relaxed and... Uh, times when I think I'm not going to be relaxed and all those things. See, so your mind, your unconscious mind is going to focus on the majority, on the more powerful emotions. Which means the energy we put into wanting and expecting and needing to be relaxed more often in our body and our minds the energy surrounding those emotions, those thoughts require more strength, more focus, more often. So for example, if someone's thinking about uh, going to work, let's say it's a weekend, they're thinking about Monday, going to work Monday, and they're thinking, if they're thinking 300 times during the weekend about how they're dreading going to work or how they expect it to be rubbish and crap and stressful then they need to be thinking at least five, six times that how it's going to be relaxing and how it's going to be fine and it has been fine loads of times before and how they're going to get through it easily and naturally the balance needs to change on those scales between negativity and positivity positive thinking and negative thinking for you it's not about having positive thinking for anybody else and it's not about false positive thinking you know, you can be positive as you like uh, about some things and it won't make a blind bit of difference. You know, you just, I could say, oh, I'm, I'm positive I could win the gold in 100 metres in the next Olympics. I can be positive as long, as much as I want. I could meditate on it, hypnotise myself 14 hours a day until the Olympics. I could train every day it wouldn't matter what I did I am not going to win the gold 100 metres in the Olympics unless I tie everyone else's shoelaces together that's the only way I could do it or if I hypnotise them for their feet to be stuck to the floor or something like that it's not going to happen but I think Zig I think it's Zig Ziglar he said I'll leave you on this one. It's not my saying, but he said, positive thinking won't let you do anything you want. 
but it will let you do everything you want better than negative thinking. I like that. Positive thinking won't let you do anything you want, but it will let you do everything you want better than negative thinking. Which means I'm going to run a lot faster in that 100 metres than I would do, you know, feeling positive than I would do if I was feeling negative. I still might only get bronze, <laughs> but that's important stuff. This is really important. And I, I do go on about this, and I'm going to continue to go on about it. Because even if consciously you're thinking, oh, what is he going on about? He's just, just saying the same thing in different ways. He's just going on and on and on. Your unconscious mind is taking this in because it's all positive. And you start to learn differently. You start to think about it. Guaranteed, regardless of what you think about this recording, and you might think, oh, none of it's making any, any difference listening to me. Well, if you, you might think that way unlikely if you're listening but you know if someone might do well my question is this I guarantee you that tomorrow or if you listen to this in the morning then today if you're listening to this at night then tomorrow at some point during the day you will think about that poo in the bath bobbing up and down it might make you laugh because it's kind of not something that you normally think about and that reminds you of the blind spot the blind spot which has been that part of you that's saying to yourself oh I can't relax I'm always going to be like this I'm, I'm a stressful person oh I don't have any choice in what I do all the stuff that we say to ourselves and all the blind spots are kind of connected to each other so you take one out you could take the whole lot out or you could at least diminish them slightly just like you know with a fuse if you blow a fuse in the toaster it can knock out all of the lights and electricity in the whole building. Of course, you can turn it back on again in the fuse box. But it can have that effect. And that effect is a nice effect. It's not nice if it's a night and all the lights go off. But it can definitely be nice if it's a stressful feeling that goes off, that just turns itself off so just remember that positivity cannot get you anything that you want but it can get you <laughs> what is it I can't believe it can't I can't, it can't make you, it can't help you do anything, but it can help you do everything better than negative thinking. Works better if you remember the words, doesn't it? So I'm going to leave you on that, and I wish you a lovely, relaxing day. And this stuff is absorbed. It, it, gets, in, it gets in there. And in some ways... The more boring it is, the more it gets in there. And the repetitiveness of it helps it slide in a little bit easier. You know when you're talking to someone and... See, I was going to go, but I'm still talking. You're talking to someone and... Well, someone's talking to you and they're going on and on. And, well, you know because you're listening to me. But someone might be just really talkative 
eventually you turn off, don't you? You stop listening. That stuff's still going in. So be careful who you do that with, because if they're a negative person, they may be chucking all that negativity at you, and because they're boring you so much, or because you just switched off because it's an overload, which often it can be with that stuff, not so much it's boring, it's just too much. I know someone like that. They're not a boring person, but they overload me with information, of stuff that I've got no interest in, and it's a bombardment. And I feel like I'm starting to switch off, you know. <laughs> so it's best to keep away, perhaps, or sometimes step back if you need it. And that should be another recording I make about people, other people, and what effect they have. Yeah, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. And maybe if, maybe the effect we have on them. So thank you for listening. I really will go this time. I feel a bit like, you know, when you, you, you hear people on TV, you know, kids and stuff saying, and they're in love, say, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up first. I feel like I'm doing that, but I'm definitely going to go. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. And over the next day between now and the next recording, do something nice for yourself. Doesn't matter what it is. Buy yourself an ice cream. If you can afford it, go and have a massage. Go and, you know, go for a swim. Watch a movie. Phone up someone that you enjoy talking to. Have a, a, a bath. Make sure it's a nice, clean, clean one. Whatever it is. Go and visit your grandmother and give her a big cuddle. Whatever. Just do something that's going to give you pleasure. So I'll speak to you next time. Lots of love. Bye.